Coming up, Zero Punctuation's take on No More Heroes for the Wii. Plus, we've got some new info on Gears of War 2. X-Play starts now. X-Play, the center of the gaming universe. Today on X-Play, Assassin's Creed makes the leap from consoles to the PC. We'll tell you if this edition is the one to own. Plus, we hit the streets and take in Grand Theft Auto 4, Prototype, and some of the most anticipated open world games of 2008. Plus, we've got an action-packed double feature as we bring you the broadcast premiere of new trailers for two of the year's most explosive games, The Bourne Conspiracy and Tom Clancy's Hawks. Our safety's off. It's game time. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the cure for the common cold, not the uncommon one. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Tuesday, April 8th. On today's show, Alta Year finally gets his due on the PC, and we'll tell you if this new version of Assassin's Creed is the best one to get. We'll also check out Prototype, GTA 4, and all the other best open world games of 2008. Find out who tops our list. And we've got the brand new trailer for Tom Clancy's Hawks and the Bourne Conspiracy. They're fortified with your daily dose of explosion. But first, let's go over to Morgan, who has all of the top headlines in today's gaming update. New Gears of War 2 details were spilled over the internet after scans of the latest Game Informer magazine were discovered. The game's storyline will take place six months after the event of the first game. Gears of War 2 will feature expanded co-op modes that will allow players to drop in and out on the fly. Even better, each player can choose their own different difficulty setting while playing in co-op. Active reloads will return and the new chainsaw duels will come in handy while battling hundreds of locust horde enemies. A PSP version of Little Big Planet is currently rumored to be in the works. A portable version of the game would conceivably allow gamers to link up to their PS3s and continue working on their creations while away from home. So far details are scarce, but the leaked information does point to a September release date which would fit nicely into the release window for the PS3 version of the game. A slew of new GTA 4 multiplayer screenshots have recently popped up. The screens show players jumping from a helicopter cockpit onto a freeway and attempts of getaways with guns ablazing. Gamers can even look forward to jumping onto the back of a street bike with a friend to provide some much needed covering fire. Could the game's April 29th release date get here any more slowly? Finally, we have another big rumor, this one regarding a motion-sensitive controller being developed by Microsoft for the Xbox 360. An unnamed source provided MTV's multiplayer blog with a sketch that looks like a drawing out of a third grader's backpack, but is said to be in development, with major input coming from Rare. Not surprising, a me-like avatar system is also said to be in the works. Hopefully they aren't doing this just so they can package a Marcus Phoenix's Pork Bow training game with a controller. Well, that's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now, let's go over to Adam, who has a review that features some good old-fashioned killing in the name of atheism. Oh, good. Assassin's Creed not only has great stealth kills, but gives you plenty of options on how you want to do the deed. In today's X-List, we look at five other top titles that feature epic, silent murders. At number five is the great Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. The only thing more deadly than his sneak attacks is his rabies. Number four is Viking Battle for Asgard. Believe it or not, roided out Norse killers can be quite nimble. Number three is the Tenchu series. Ninjas are sneaky and love to stab people through paper walls. Number two is Splinter Cell. Sam Fisher is a master at the old come from behind and snap your neck move. I've tried this before and just ended up turning a lot of people around. And number one is the Metal Gear Solid series. These games taught us to never try a stealth kill on someone with an exclamation point over their head. Everyone's favorite magazine-wielding amnesiac spy is set to have another blockbuster release this summer, only it won't be in theaters. The Born Conspiracy is coming to a console near you this June. And we've got a broadcast premiere of the new trailer. Anyone can kill. 
Jason, he brings this to a whole nother level. Returns, we get a sneak peek of tomorrow's zero punctuation review of No More Heroes. Plus, we preview the biggest sandbox games of 08. First, we have a poll question. What is your favorite game based on a movie based on a book? Is it A, Lord of the Rings, B, Conan, or C, 007? Head on over to our website, g4tv.com slash xplay, and let us know, and we will be right back. Coming up on X-Play, we take to the skies for some high-flying combat. We'll show you the broadcast premiere of the new trailer for Tom Clancy's Hawks. Plus, we've got Yahtzee's take on No More Heroes in his latest Zero Punctuation review. And get ready to broaden your horizons. We'll run down the biggest open-world games of 2008, Grand Theft Auto 4, Prototype, and more. Find out who tops our list. Stay with us. <laughs> Fans and critics agree, Attack of the Show is time well wasted. One of the coolest shows on TV, more ballsy in its journalism than 60 Minutes. What will the fanatical religious right hate more, the fact that there's witchcraft in the book or that there's a gay headmaster? AOTS doesn't push the envelope, they lick it. Yeah! I attain techno bliss. I think you should just take it out and show everybody what you got. The show that gets it before it gets out. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7 and 10, only on G4. Hi, this is Jade Raymond, and you're watching X-Play on G4. Welcome back to X-Play. Most kids played doctor when they were young, whereas I played mad doctor, which is why my friend Jill has a hand attached to your abdomen and why I'm not allowed to practice medicine in 48 states. Thanks, Kansas. There's a new game that might save others from the same fate. Here's our preview of Monster Lab. So with Monster Lab, uh, what you do is start off as a junior member of the uh, Mad Science Alliance as the fourth member. You have three other senior scientists that train you and uh, teach you how to build bigger and better monsters through exploration, a couple of mini games, doing some challenges. So what I'm doing here is performing one of the uh, one of the 12 experiments we have in Monster Lab. This is a welding game. I'm going to go make a mechanical arm here. How well I perform this experiment is going to determine how well my actual arm turns out. Basically what you do is harvest ingredients throughout six different areas of the world in the Uncanny Valley, take them back to your, your different uh, workshops, perform some wacky experiments on them, make heads, arms, torsos, legs, and then put those all together in whatever combination you want, and then take those monsters back out in the world and try and defeat the evil monsters that have been uh, infiltrating the world. So what we're trying to do with Monster Lab is uh, give the user the experience of becoming their own mad scientist. I know when I was a kid I wanted to make monsters uh, out of anything I could find. <laughs> <laughs> now what we've done here is, is give the user that experience on the Nintendo Wii and the DS with none of the messy cleanup. Coming up, get an exclusive look at this summer's hottest and most anticipated games with X-Play Summer Games Preview. We'll have five days of in-depth coverage and we'll bring you the latest on games like SOCOM Confrontation, LEGO Indiana Jones, and Little Big Planet. We will have world premiere demos and brand new footage of Summer's biggest titles every day that week. Plus, we'll kick the week off with a one-hour Grand Theft Auto 4 special. Week-long coverage starts April 28th. Check out g4tv.com slash summer games for info and updates. All right. What you do when your game is in direct competition with GTA 4? Well, you have to think outside the box and then cover the box in hallucinogenic drugs and smoke it. This is what you get. Just think of it as a trust fall, where the person falling has to trust gravity. Ah! 
is good. Sometimes in life, people need a push in the right direction. <laughs> My, I would say rehab did well by Gary. When next play returns, we've got a preview of Zero Punctuation. Take on No More Heroes. It's a Suda 51 and Yassi mashup you're not going to want to miss. Stay tuned. <laughs> Click today. Welcome back to Wax Play. It's Tuesday, which means I'm already getting a Pavlovian response of laughter in anticipation for a sneak peek of tomorrow's Zero Punctuation review of No More Heroes. So, without any further ado... No More Heroes is a Japanese game based around Jedi lightsaber fighting and starring as the main character, a hopeless pop culture obsessed social reject who spends most of his time whining, getting strung along by women and being a generally unlikable <laughs> bend. So at least he can't fault it for understanding its audience, predictable joke. The game is brought to us by Suda51, the 51st result of an illegal Japanese cloning experiment to create the world's most auteur game designer, Suda's 1 through 50 having perished after their minds failed to absorb the necessary level of pretentiousness. His last game was Killer7, and let's get one thing straight, I loved Killer7. There we were, living our great predictable lives, playing our great predictable games, when along came Killer 7 in a Technicolor dream code, leaving slightly perplexed joy in the wake of its huge motorbike, showing exactly what could be done when you flaunt all established convention and just start exploring what can really be done with gaming as an art form. I still don't know how to classify it. Puzzle, action, adventure, rail, shooter? Well, whatever it was, it was a preciously unique, amusing cartoon whale in an ocean of secondhand bong water. Now we have no more heroes, a Grand Theft Auto clone. Shine on, you crazy diamond, said Yahtzee, his voice thick like sarcastic marmites. <laughs> Remember, you can get Zero Punctuation's full uncensored review of No More Heroes only at EscapistMagazine.com. And X-Play will have new previews every Tuesday night. And now let's go over to Morgan, who's got a trailer for the latest Ubisoft cash cow. Yes, Ubisoft recently bought out the rights to the Tom Clancy brand of video games. This means they can make whatever they like and not have to worry about pesky royalties. It shouldn't take them long to reveal a new franchise, one where the battles take place in the skies. Here's your first look at the broadcast premiere of Tom Clancy's Hawk. is the new K. This Friday, G4 presents the network premiere of Lost in Translation, the Academy Award-winning dramedy starring Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. The two explore Tokyo together, sing karaoke, and make whiskey commercials. Catch the G4 premiere of Lost in Translation after another all-new X-Play Friday night at 8.30. It's all part of G4's Duty Free TV. Up next on X-Play, find out who's going to be king of the sandbox when we preview our top four open world games of 08. You'll get the latest on Fallout 3, Mercenaries 2, and more. Stay tuned.
Wow, man, it's 420 on G4. The party goes down April 20th at 1 and lasts all day long, man. Only on G4. Welcome back to X Play. Early in the show, we asked you what is your favorite game based on a movie based on a book? We have tabulated your votes, and the leader is C007 with 55%. But now let's go over to Adam, who is set to broaden your horizons. All right, Bond only wins for Goldeneye, only that game. All right, ever since the worldwide success of Grand Theft Auto 3, open world games have grown in popularity. Seven years later, virtually all the big publishers have put out or will be putting out sandbox adventures. Here's a look at the top open world games we're looking forward to in a way. Number four on our list of open world games we're most looking forward to is Mercenaries 2 World in Flames. We really enjoy the original, and this one looks to deliver even more over-the-top gunslinging. We've also heard that the new game will feature a cooperative mode that lets players blow apart a fully destructible Venezuela with their best friends. Looks for Mercs 2 to explode on the next-gen systems this August. The third place is Prototype, a sandbox game that developer Radical Entertainment demoed for us back in January. In it, you play as Alex Mercer, an amnesiac who's mysteriously acquired amazing powers. You see, he has the ability to assume the shape and powers of those he kills. You'll be using those abilities to wreak havoc in an extremely detailed recreation of New York City. And since these are the guys behind Hulk Ultimate Destruction, we're expecting to be able to do a fair amount of urban replanning. Prototype will see its multi-platform release this October. In second place, our old friend Grand Theft Auto is hijacking our hearts and wallets one more time. We're all looking for that special someone. Part 4 is the first installment that's built for next-gen systems, and as such, there's a lot of pressure on it to look amazing. It looks like Rockstar is up to the challenge, considering the incredibly dense city we've seen in the trailers. With the new Euphoria tag, Liberty City is more alive than ever. Perhaps here things will be different. Releasing in three short weeks, we won't have to wait long to see if it lives up to the series' rich heritage. <laughs> At number one, who else could top our list but Fallout 3? GTA may be the king of the sandbox game, but Fallout is more of an unknown quantity. we played in a city before, but a post-nuclear nightmare version of the East Coast? Consider us intrigued. If Fallout 3 can capture the scope of Oblivion along with the depth and charisma of the original Fallout, we may have a Game of the Year contender on our hands. Look for Fallout 3 to hit PCs and next-gen consoles this fall. I sense the disturbance in the force. Oh, wait, it's just the X-Play replay. <laughs> On today's show, we reviewed Assassin's Creed for the PC. If you've got a high-end rig that can run it right, you're in for a treat. It looks great. There are four extra missions, though, believe it or not, you might want to use a controller instead of a mouse and keyboard. But despite that minor problem, it's another five out of five for Altair. Okay, this show is quickly coming to a close, but we'll be back tomorrow with another all-new X Play at 8. And on our next show, we'll leaf through our dream journal and show you the top five games we'd like to see on the Wii. We left out the night terrors. Mm. Plus, we'll get some face time with Chris Taylor, the man behind the RTS mech action of Supreme Commander. Then we'll review the Xbox 360 version of Universe at War Earth Assault and tell you if this RTS should have stayed on PCs. And Kristen Holt will be in the studio to help you with your Viking Battle for Asgard skull collection. How many have you collected? Um, I would say about four, five, but I mean, hopefully now we can move away from skulls being that secret thing in the game. We can get bouncy balls. Yeah, flowers. Flowers would be nice. They'd be strange on a Viking battlefield, right. but that's okay. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Don't listen to me. <laughs>